want to talk today about um, something called low PAP A levels in your blood. And this is something that you may have um, discovered during your pregnancy. And it's one of those sort of things that you don't really hear about unless it's relevant to you. So low PAP A levels mean, it stands for um, low pregnancy associated plasma protein. And essentially it's a protein that is made um, by the placenta during pregnancy. And it's thought to um, help regulate the uh, growth of the baby and other stuff. It's not tr very clearly understood at this point. However, we do know that there are some um, associations with having low PAP A levels and other things, which is why if it's found that you have low PAP A levels in your early pregnancy, that you will usually experience a little bit more monitoring. So one of the ways that it becomes clear is that your PAP A levels are um, measured when you have your first scan at 12 weeks um, and particularly if you have the nuchal scan which is um, looking out for um, Down syndrome, trisomy 13 and other um, genetic disorders um, and it's one of the things that's an indicator um, just because you have low PAP A doesn't mean other things are going to happen, but we do know that there's a bit of a connection there. So it's one of the things that's that's a flag um, that we look out for. Now, what happens with your pregnancy associated plasma protein as it is it, ge it gently increases throughout your pregnancy um, and in low PAP A um, instances, we know that it doesn't increase as much or the levels stay fairly low. So in itself, it's not necessarily a problem. However, we do know that when we have looked at um, what are known as adverse perinatal outcomes, we have seen a link between those outcomes and people who have low PAP A levels. So is it something to worry about? What can you do about it? Um, it's there's various studies and articles on the subject, and I've included some links in the description of this video for you to do further reading. Um, looking at an overview, it would seem that um, overall there is an increase of um, restricted fetal growth. That means your baby might be a little bit smaller than expected. There's also... Um, a link with uh, premature delivery so that your baby might be born a little bit earlier. And there's also an increased risk of preeclampsia as well, which is a condition um, that affects your blood pressure late in pregnancy. And um, if you um, have preeclampsia, in most cases, you will find that you're um, having an induction or being um, or having a cesarean to um, get your baby out because it's it can um, have um, it, it can be a very serious condition, but I don't want to talk about that in this uh, video. So there are increased risks, but what does that kind of mean? So looking um, overall at all of the studies, it seems that in, in about 65% of cases, if you have low PAP A levels, then everything's fine and there's nothing to worry about. So that's, I think, reassuring in two thirds of the cases. But there is an increased risk um, for growth restrictions. So on average, in about a third of cases, if you have low PAP-A, your baby may be a bit smaller. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem in itself, um, but nevertheless, it's something that we like to keep an eye on. And in around a quarter of cases, we find that your baby can end up in the NICU after it's been born. So the NICU is the baby unit, special care baby unit. So it, it does seem that... Um, it's a really good idea to have a close eye on you if this is something you're experiencing. So if you do measure low PAP A levels in early pregnancy, what tends to happen is that you will have additional um, PAP A screenings to just monitor your levels. Um, and you will also probably invite it to have more growth um, ultrasound scans just to check on the growth of your baby. Now, how many you have and at what weeks they are 
does seem to vary from trust to trust. I've seen various um, hospitals offering anything from two extra scans from the two that you already have to four and some maybe more depending on your trust. So it's definitely something that you need to chat with your midwife about and they will give you your advice on how they will be monitoring you more closely. Some people are prescribed a low dosage of aspirin, which is thought to just help um, safeguard you um, against any out, um, adverse outcomes. But that's completely uh, a personal decision based on your personal history. So you won't necessarily have that, but you, you might do. That might be something that's um, offered to you. So in itself, it's not something to be particularly worried about. It's not something you can do anything about. But it is worth bearing in mind that there are some increased risks for, um, as we say, adverse outcomes. So less than kind of like a normal outcome. Uh, but in most cases, you will find that there's absolutely no difference at all for you. So um, it's always important to do your own research around this. It's always important to understand um, and have a conversation with your midwife or your consultant about your specific case, about what your levels are, where the normal ranges are and where you fall into that and any other things that you might expect and how that's going to change your birthing pathway. Um, and that's only your midwife and consultant will be able to, you know, show you that pathway for you because it will be unique to you and unique to your trust. So um, have a look at the extra articles that I've posted. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to get in touch. Eleanor at birdsang.co.uk. And hopefully this has been a, um, a useful and informative little video. Thanks a lot. Bye.